This is the Lifestyle Builders Podcast, show 64, Keeping Up with the Whirlwind with Rachel and Paul Peterson. And I think one of the biggest things there, if we were to come on here and say like, oh, it's been rainbows and sunshine, like we, <laughs> we love each other and like each other every day, that wouldn't be true. Um, there have been rough patches. And I think one of the biggest things we realized was if we're not in sync, Together, everything else doesn't feel in sync. Hi, Ariana here with a quick PSA about why this topic is so important to us. Tom and I know how challenging it can be to start and run a business, to take care of your loved ones, and on top of it all, to keep a healthy relationship with your spouse. It isn't easy, and that is why we created our Lifestyle Builders Mentorship Program. As a special offer during this very special Couples and Entrepreneurship Month, We'd like to invite you to get started with your first month of Lifestyle Builders for only $1. So if you, and your spouse is welcome too, need more strategy, support and guidance in your business and life, plus people who truly care about you and will keep you accountable, sign up now at tomandariana.com slash LBCouples with the code LBCouples. Welcome back to another episode of our Couples and Entrepreneurship series. Before we dive into this episode, a little bit more about Rachel and Paul. The queen of social media, CEO and owner of the Viral Touch Marketing Agency, full-time social media consultant and strategist, founder of Social Media United. Rachel is a top social media marketer and consultant, worldwide viral sensation, leading authority on storytelling through social media and Facebook ads. Rachel's journey began in 2016 while working in her nine to five, actually it was an eight to five day job. Within six months, she replaced her income and built a clientele that she loved working with. Rachel is also a mother to three beautiful children and wife to her supportive husband, Paul. Paul is the constant behind-the-scenes support for the businesses that he and Rachel run together. His work as the managing director for SMU and as the COO for Rachel's agency, companies doing over $1.5 million in revenue per year, make everything possible in crazy and demanding industries. He's an amazing dad and husband and a stellar athlete. Don't challenge him in ping pong, tennis, basketball, or anything else. All right, you guys, we are so excited to share this episode with you. Like, I don't even know how we got through so much amazing stuff in like 28 minutes. Well, I feel like it's because their whole life has been like <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Yeah, that is one thing that we jumped right into at the beginning of the episode was how fast they have done everything. I don't want to spoil the good stuff, so we won't tell you what they've done fast, but I'm sure you can guess. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and here's the thing too, like, what we've been seeing throughout this is that everyone kind of has their own journey and you know Rachel and Paul's journey is definitely very unique and a cool thing about this episode is that Rachel is actually the front runner and the face of their businesses mm -hmm. so this is a very different dynamic than a lot of the people we talk to where the male is kind of like the breadwinner and front runner so really good insights and perspectives on them not only from like how they do everything they do mm -hmm. but then also how that dynamic uh, played not only in life but also in business yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you know, they've got kids, they've got multiple companies and they are married. So this is just a really good episode, pulling all of that together to show you some of the struggles and things that they've overcome in just a very short time. Kids, marriage, multiple companies. Sounds like someone else. We know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are near and dear to our heart. So without further ado, we'll let you listen in and enjoy. All right, everyone, we are back with the Lifestyle Builders podcast, Couples and Entrepreneurship, dun, 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 and we are so excited. We've got Rachel and Paul Peterson on today, and you've probably seen Rachel in one of our earlier episodes. Now we've got her other half, and we're super excited to hear about some of their dynamics and just the different things that they've gone through as a couple since jumping into this entrepreneurship thing. So first off... Rachel, I, I, if people don't know, you had your, vi your post go viral about your ring and kind of like how you guys got started. 
Can you just tell everyone quickly the story of how you and Paul met and what transpired after that? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So my husband, Paul and I, we make decisions fast. Um, yes, when do. <laughs> very fast, we don't like to waste time on anything. Um, but when we met, we were actually being set up by what is now my sister-in-law, who is my good friend at the time. And she brought us together at an event. We hit it off that first night so well. Literally seven days later, he's like, we're at dinner. And he's like, I'm in love with you. The moment the waiter, <laughs> yeah, the moment the waiter walked away, it just, I vomited it out. And I didn't even know I was doing that. Like, it just happened. And thankfully, I felt the same. So it wasn't like a weird fatal attraction thing. It was like, <laughs> that was the next sigh of relief. It was like, I couldn't believe I said it. And then when she said, oh, God, me too. I was like, yes. Sweet. We're good. We're good. <laughs> And so basically we were going to wait six months to get married. But then when we told our friends and family, like we found the one and we're going to get married in six months, the backlash was so strong. Like people were like, you can't, you cannot get married in six months. And so I called him up on a Sunday night and I said, Hey, so I know we were going to wait six months to get married, but no one seems to be approving that. And I was just going to wait for everyone else's sake. Do you want to get married tomorrow? And he was like, yeah. yeah well, i got nothing going on tomorrow. Why not? <laughs> so, like, I finished up my shift at work, curled my hair, put on a white dress, and went and met him and got married. So, 13 days after we met, we got married. Yep. I love it. I love just your story is just so much fun and it's just so out of the box. Like you never hear about that, but you guys fit together so well. And you obviously have some big differences in your personality and has allowed you guys to just, you know, like you, you fill in the gaps, which I love because, you know, Tom and I are very, very similar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, what's interesting about that, you guys said you do things fast and you're not lying because, I mean, we've known each other, um, I think, kind of early on in your journey. And are I mean, involved? since then, yeah. yeah. And since then, you know, you started one company, you started another company, um, you both ended up leaving your jobs, like Rachel was you first and then Paul. And so I'm curious, as you guys went through all of this, you also have now three kids, uh, two kids at the time, like just a lot of stuff going on. So like the question we get all the time is how do you guys manage all the chaos? So I'm going to ask you guys, <laughs> how do you manage all the chaos of getting married fast, growing a family with children and now also growing multiple businesses? Oh man. I, you know, it's so it's crazy. Cause uh, we, when I look back, even of just when we met, it's like you said, it's like eight lifetimes mm -hmm. in this last for five years. I'm not kidding. Like before, yeah. before Rachel and I got married, like everything was in slow motion. Like now it's, and we're, we've adapted the speed of things. Like mm -hmm. we just adjust, we, we kind of learn on the fly, but we, with all the past experiences we've had, uh, it, it was a benefit to us. Like we've, we've been able to learn from those mistakes while we were, before we met. And, uh, you know, now as, as parents, as business owners, we're still learning and we love that. Uh, and we're not afraid to be wrong either. So mm -hmm. just don't make the same mistake twice. That's for me. And I think one of the biggest things there, if we were to come on here and say like, oh, it's been rainbows and sunshine. Like we, <laughs> <laughs> we um, love each other and like each other every day. That wouldn't be true. Um, there have been rough patches. And I think one of the biggest things we realized was if we're not in sync, together, everything else doesn't feel in sync. And we felt that throughout my pregnancy. That was a really tough time. I mean, I don't, I didn't really open up about how much of a struggle that was for us as individuals, for us as a couple, for our family, for our businesses. But it was after we had Dominic that it was like, we need to get back in sync. We need to be, we need to feel like one heartbeat and feel so on the same wavelength about everything. And so we grow a lot because everything changes so fast. We talk every single night about growth and self-awareness and what we learned that day. And that has been a game changer. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I love that. The evening, it's like the, the before you go to bed thing. Um, and I've heard other people talk about that. And I know a couple other couples who do that as well. Tom and I have done that. And it is so true because you have that time to like decompress, to come down from the day and to really reconnect with your other half, the person that you're on this journey with. And, you know, a lot of times we have so much going on in, in 
the day and with the kids and with the businesses. Like you don't even talk to each other someday. We work from the same house. And sometimes I'm like, man, I didn't really talk to you at all today. You know? So it's like, sometimes you need that coming back together space, but you have to work to create it because a lot of times like he goes to bed early some nights and I'm like, well, I got a lot of work to do. So when are we going to sync up? So we've now shifted instead of at night, we do a lot in the mornings. We do our, our daily things in the morning so that we can both be there and be present and not half asleep. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, it's interesting. So obviously, um, you know, we all have a lot of roles, right? You have a role as uh, spouses, you have roles as parents, you have roles as um, business owners. So one thing that I think is really interesting about you guys is that Rachel, you were actually like the lead and kind of the front and center with the businesses. So you left your job first and you basically kind of had the business going. And then Paul, you were in the job and eventually you guys were able to both leave. So I'm curious, Paul, I, how has it been kind of playing, I think the opposite role of what most people expect, right? Most people expect the male is going to like be the entrepreneur, be the breadwinner. And (laughs) Rachel has done an amazing job with that. But I don't think a lot of people hear about like what it looks like as a father and as a husband to support, you know, such an awesome female. Okay. So it's, it's, it really, for me, it wasn't really difficult. Um, being uh, behind the scenes, a it's kind of part of my personality. Mm-hmm. But nice. the hard thing is, is yeah, it's really having to be comfortable with your, you know, your role. Like your, where do you want to be? Are you comfortable with other people, you know, seeing you that way, even though it's, it's not the norm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for me, like it, it, it was such an easy fit, and I was already so confident in like, oh, I've you know, when we first, first got married, you know, I had the corporate job where I was the breadwinner, you know, and we could have stayed that way, but we chose to level up. And let's be honest, I'm, I'm not a creative mind per se. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the improvement offer. And that's what I've told her before. <laughs> you create it and I'll come in, I'll come in behind and I'll, you know, I'll make it better or I'll help out. I'll manage things because I'm comfortable with it. I'm good at it. Mm-hmm. And uh, to be honest with you, I've never, never wanted to be the, the front and face of, of anything. So um, I, as long as ultimately you just have to be comfortable with, you know, with it, who you are and, and your role. And, and still that doesn't define, you know, who's the head of the home per se either, mm-hmm. you know, cause as, as my job, I've always known my job as, as a husband and father is it's, I'm protecting her. I protect mm-hmm. my kids above mm-hmm. all else. Even if that means from, the businesses, you know, mm-hmm. taking up time and things like that, or, you know, our busy schedule, um, you know, just making things as, as, as excited as we get about mm-hmm. the ventures that we're going on, you know, time to slow down or, uh, you know, make a difficult decision. I'll be the one to take, you know, take that on, on my shoulders. So. And one of the biggest things that's really interesting is like our roles have shifted already. So like when I first took Paul out of, when I took him out of the nine to five, <laughs> uh, that's so weird. at first we didn't find our rhythm. It was nope. a little bit awkward for a while where it was like, wait, so what is your role? What is my role? How much can I work? Are you working? Wait, what? Like, does that mean all the household chores fall on you? Let me just tell you, that was a really interesting time figuring out where we all played into things. But then what happened when I was pregnant is I just got to a point where I was working way too much. I was overwhelmed. I wasn't managing my team well. I didn't have systems in place. Everything was honestly like on me and I, I was shutting down and, and I couldn't cause my businesses were huge. And I was like, what do I do? And without even asking Paul just like knew how to step in and bring the team together. And he started naturally building systems and managing. And I was like, I didn't appreciate it at the moment. Cause I was just like, I feel sick. I feel fat. Like, but <laughs> the reality is I'm like, Oh my gosh, my husband stepped in and supported me so much when I needed him. And now I can't, I could never do business without him ever again. Yeah. I love that so much. And I think, you know, a lot of people do get through those rough patches where they, it's like your roles are shifting and changing, but you haven't quite figured them out yet. And you feel so lost. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, because you're, you're lost and maybe they're lost too. Then you get that misalignment between the two of you. So it's like, it just compounds all of the complexity and all the frustration that you're going through. And it just seems like it's never going to end. But then all of a sudden things just seem to click. 
you know, and you're like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And then everything kind of falls into place. And then you get to that next level and you're comfortable for a little bit. But, you know, that happens so many times. And I think people don't realize that it's a, it's constant. You don't ever find a place where you're going to be comfortable forever. Like you're going to have to keep leveling up and changing. And it's the same in your marriage. It's the same as a parent. Like it, it's just you kind of have to be prepared for it and then just take things as they go because there really isn't any planning. (laughs) One of the craziest things too, I remember like everyone used to talk about leveling up and for most people, it's something that happens every couple years, you know, like you level up. And I remember the first time I went through a level up and I was like, this is really uncomfortable personally, professionally, mentally, physically, like everything in my life is being affected right now. And then we started speeding up so fast Mm -hmm. that it felt like there was a level up almost weekly. And I I started to get used to the fact that there was always going to be like an uncomfortable feeling. But Mm -hmm. yeah, it's been (laughs) whirlwind. Well, I was going to say too, and you know, Paul, I love what you said about, you know, really being comfortable with yourself and being comfortable with your relationship. Because oftentimes what we find, and I mean, we fell into it early on, our relationship came so easy at the beginning. And then once we started kind of putting the business into the mix, now it was like we started figuring out some of our differences, but we had never figured out how do we work through tough times? Because to be honest, we didn't have any like Mm -hmm. the early years. And then once we put business in place, once we put kids in place and our role has changed in each of those, we found we had to be a lot more intentional and a lot of it came out through like those tough conversations. I mean, lots of tears, you know, lots of challenges. (laughs) But um, I'm curious, as, as you guys have gone through, especially doing it so fast, you know, how do you now see kind of when the next level up's coming? And then how do you guys communicate and figure out how you each change as you go through those level ups? I feel like we're playing Mario. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think those nightly touch bases are huge because we're leveling up every week. It feels like every week we've got a new project and system and strategy and idea it's so fast that we have to be intentional every day Mm -hmm. or else in a week you could completely shift apart we've seen that happen we're in a week we're like wait do we not know each other all of a sudden you know like who are you i don't know you (laughs) i'm not the person i married um but we we have to connect every day yeah well tom you said i mean yeah uh the i think the for, for me and for us, I believe the big key that we learned, especially after Don was born, is um, there's so much going on in life that us not being in sync, uh, kind of really we became, our relationship was the, you know, on the back burner. Mm-hmm. Everything else was before it. And mm-hmm. we became intentional. With, that was the big word that changed it for us. Is like being intentional with each other first. And then that translated, oh my gosh, that worked so well for us. Now we can be intentional with, our businesses, our kids, mm-hmm. uh, actually, yeah, you know, the other way around works better. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the truth is, if, if, you know, with us, if we're not working together, uh-huh. then we're missing the boat with our kids and our business mm-hmm. too. Um, and about the up leveling, I, we've, because we've gotten so accustomed to the fast pace mm-hmm. now, you kind of, you kind of sense that when you make a, a decision or a change uh, or that one has to be made, you know, one has to be made you kind of know that there's going to be a new, a new pain, growing pain there coming mm-hmm. up, but you, know, you adjust for it. And uh, hopefully, you know, your past experience can help you uh, make a better decision in the future. And uh, the intentional is, has just made the world of difference for, for us and our businesses. And one of the other crazy things, a lot of people have been asking me, like, are you going for the 10 X or sorry, the two CC X award, which is 10 million in your business. And like someone asked me that yesterday and I was like, I'm going to be honest with you. Could I do it? Yes. I don't, I will not get it at FHL this year because I know how much intentionality and personal growth and professional growth has to happen to get there. And I'm not personally prepared to go through that much before February. I I don't want to next the year after. Yeah, probably. But I, I'm not going to push for it because it's too much for us to maintain normal too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and I think that's so important because I mean, most entrepreneurs are high achievers, right? Like I know how many nights you and I were both up at like, you know, three in the morning and I'm like, you know, does she waking up? Does she go to bed yet? Like, I'm just waking up. Like, you know, 
but what like what we found is that um, our our whole theme this year was to put us first because like you guys said as we were building the businesses as we were having the kids our relationship and everything got pushed to the side and we were very intentional this year about bringing that back but I'm curious do you guys have an overall kind of vision or a plan for where you want life to go and then how does the business kind of tie into that go for it. Okay. So one of the things that we talk about a lot is like we ask each other big questions. Like I'll literally Google questions that couples can ask each other because I'm like, let's find something that we haven't talked about. And the other night the question was, if you had a genie and you had three wishes, what would they be? And we both struggled for a second because we were like, there's not really much we would change. And so the vision for our lives is that we raise kids who are good, helpful, productive, uh, hopefully entrepreneurs, but hopefully just doing something that they love. And so there's nothing I would change. There are things that will happen that will be really cool that'll be different. So for example, like we want a bigger house, but we're not going to do it at the cost of where life is at and Mm -hmm. our business is growing. But when it comes to the vision, I can truly say like, I feel in alignment with the vision of our lives. And right now our biggest mission is raising amazing kids that's our biggest personal thing and then the next era thankfully i'm actually really excited about this mm-hmm. when our kids are all 18 i'm still pretty darn young which is, <laughs> i'm so excited about and that i still look young so. oh yeah but he still looks young like i'm, I'm not even 30 and so there's going to be an entire like 20 years before most people even retire that i still have to do amazing things. And so Mm -hmm. as much as I have this big vision of all the things we're going to do and the way we're going to change the world, it feels like this chapter of our lives is really focused on making sure our kids are productive and great and healthy and well-rounded and hopefully not too screwed up. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And then I would say, you know, the business tied in into this is uh, the goal will never be, at least I don't believe it'll ever be financial for us because Mm -hmm. Once you get to a certain point, right, it's never about the money anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, we want to make a difference. I know for her, it's to the masses. For me, it's I want to know that I've made a difference in every team member's Mm -hmm. life. You know, every team member that's worked with us, for us, you name it. I want to know that their life improved on our way to whatever goals we had Mm business-wise. I love that. And you guys are so people focused. And um, I think there is no way that your kids are not going to grow to be awesome because they have parents like you who are there looking out for them and making sure that they're living a life of intention and, you know, learning and growing as human beings. So I don't think you guys have anything to worry about there. (laughs) One thing I would love to just ask you, though, is personality wise, did you find you had any hurdles when it comes to communicating with each other productively? Because I know that's an issue where Tom and I struggled mm-hmm. a lot because we are so very different. <laughs> we speak to each other and just in general very differently. Yes. Nope, it's been perfect. In the- <laughs> 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 I don't know what you're talking about. What communication issues? <laughs> <laughs> We're soulmates. Uh- <laughs> uh, okay, definitely. So one major personality um trait that I have that makes communication hard is when it comes to relationships, I get so emotional. And this isn't just like our relationship. It's like relationships with anyone that I love and trust. And if I get nervous that something's changing, there's literally, I I heard Gary Vaynerchuk talk about this with sports. He said he doesn't understand when people get politically charged. He doesn't understand religious conversations, but he gets this way with sports where there's a chemical imbalance in his body and he feels it and his blood boils. I get that way when I'm uncertain about the relationships that I rely on and I get so triggered. Even if it's something small, I go several years ahead as to what it could possibly be and go to worst case scenario. And we've, we've been working on that. And I feel like we're, we've turned a new corner mm-hmm. with it because in the past it would be like, I would absolutely melt down and become a sub, a sobbing puddle on the floor when it doesn't even make sense. Mm-hmm. And that was something we worked through intensely over the last three months well and then me being an introvert like he doesn't tell me (laughs) anything (laughs) (laughs) well i'm always thinking and processing and if you know if it doesn't feel like something that's needs to be said you know even if it 
in my mind, you know, in my head, I'm like, oh, that wouldn't make sense. I, why do we need to communicate about that? That's a given or things like that. Uh, I've had to learn that, no, it's, you need to talk about it, address yeah. it as soon as you can. Even if you don't think it's a big deal, they pile up mm -hmm. and at some point it's a big deal, you know? So, oh, yeah. uh, it's, you know, we're still learning. Uh, oh, yeah. Communication is still going to be always the number one topic or issue for us. Um, yeah. But that's that whole being intentional part, you know, part yeah. is as long as we keep trying, uh, you know, we take some time every day, mm -hmm. uh, it'll definitely help. <laughs> Yeah, well, and, and that's such a good takeaway. And, you know, what's been cool, like, as we've grown our businesses, and then as we've talked to and followed so many of you guys that have grown your businesses, we get these common themes coming up. And what we're already seeing with all the different couples we've talked to here is these common themes of like, hey, listen, there's definitely benefits and certain things get easier as you're more successful. But guess what? There's other things that are then more challenging. So, you know, I, I think for anybody watching, if your takeaway from this is hopefully the fact that there's always going to be challenges. But as you said, being aligned and having those communications and, and checking back in then helps for every one of those challenges that you come up with. Yeah. Yeah. I've got one major tip too, because someone gave us this tip and this was huge. So you know how like in marriage, sometimes your physical relationship can struggle just because you're busy. Mm -hmm. um, someone gave us this tip of when we pass, you know how sometimes you'll pass each other and it's like you like walk around the other person because you don't want to bump into them. And like sometimes you can go a whole day without even ac without even touching accidentally. And our, uh, the advice we got that I loved was become intentional about touch. Mm -hmm. And so like when you pass each other in the kitchen, stop for a moment, you're not so busy that you can't kiss. Mm -hmm. And so Paul's really good at this. Like we just, we stop and we kiss several times a day. And I know that sounds really, really, really cheesy. And it <laughs> felt cheesy it at did. first, it did. but it actually like benefited everything because suddenly it wasn't like two people just trying to go through the rhythms of the day without accidentally bumping into one another. It was like, no, hey, bump into me. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I want to. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. huge for us. And just that simple, you know, yeah. look and, and acknowledgement, you know, to mm -hmm. each other. Like for me, you know, yeah. I went to bed a whole lot, you know, happier at night. But that was for a lot of reasons. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know. Oh, God. I love it, you guys. So, you know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. So before we wrap this amazing conversation up, we just talked about like numerous tips and pieces of advice. Is there anything else you'd like to tell our listeners or, you know, have them take away from listening to your story and the episode here today? Yes. Okay. So if you're in a place where you feel like your relationship is on the rocks, even if you feel like you're at rock bottom with your relationship, anything can change in a month. This is one of the biggest things that I've ever realized. And same, same with business, same with parenting, same with everything. I believe you're always just about a month away from having a totally different outlook. Um, one month of intentionality can absolutely transform your marriage. Like that's my biggest thing that I would hope people would take away from this. I love it. All right. And where is the best place for people to find you guys? I mean, obviously they may already know how to find you, Rachel, but um, if they want to reach out and, you know, talk to you or talk to Paul, what's the best place for them to do that? All right. I'm going to be straight up honest. Paul doesn't like what people can find him. <laughs> I can't be found. I'm, you guys are lucky to find me. Yeah. I mean, I found him. He was in the kitchen, but I'm like the only person who can find him. You've got the secret to finding Paul if you guys need him. <laughs> uh, so the easiest way to reach out to us is just on my um, website, rachelpeterson.com. Um, Paul doesn't even have like hardly a functioning email um, no, or a box. He just that's started Boxer like for the first time ever. <laughs> he intentionally tries to stay out of the limelight. Um, but if you have questions for, for Paul, feel free to submit them on my contact form on my website and we'll make sure that they get to him. Awesome. All right, you guys, it's been another amazing episode with Tom and Ariana, your hosts and lifestyle builders. And a huge, huge thank you to you, Rachel and Paul, for coming on and sharing your whirlwind of a romance <laughs> business and parenting journey so far. Thank you guys. 
Thanks for having us. We love you guys. Oh, it was a no-brainer. Always fun. <laughs> we need to live closer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> yeah. And so for everyone listening, key takeaway here is I want you guys to remember it's your life, your business, your way. We'll see you next time. Hey, we hope you enjoyed this episode. If you know another entrepreneur who may benefit from hearing this show, we would so appreciate you being a good friend and sharing it with them. And just a reminder, as a special offer during this super special Couples and Entrepreneurship Month, we'd like to invite you to get started with your first month of Lifestyle Builders for only $1. Sign up now at tomanariana.com slash lbcouples with the promo code lbcouples. Are you a Lifestyle Builders podcast fan? We'd love to hear from you. Head on over to tomandariana.com slash iTunes and leave us a review.